This is Boxing Tickets and I, we are delighted to be joined once again with the smelling assassin, Caitlin <laughs> Phelan. It probably only feels like yesterday since we've last done an interview and haven't researched, haven't looked to see when it was, but I'm approaching 600 now, so I'd probably say it was at least about 300 interviews ago, but I guess in some ways, as we know with boxing, we're obviously fans come involved at different stages, people might not know who you are, so obviously just let know people obviously first of all know what you've done as an amateur. Yes, yeah, so as an amateur I have 10 national titles. Um, I won a European bronze and a world bronze medal and just I've got as far as I could with amateur. So. And, and like you done that all by the stage of 19 as well? I did, yeah. I decided to turn professional at 19. So. <laughs> and and at, at night, I guess like you turned pro 20, was it March 2019? It was actually, yeah, so, yeah. So you turned pro, like, I know, I know we're only in the start of 2024, it nearly makes us feel old, you know, in the time, so, like, it's five years ago where you pretty much first started out. Why, why turn professional so young? Like, was it, you know, you sort of went the, you know, dreams and aspirations more as a pro, or why was it you decided to turn pro so young? I just, I wasn't enjoying the amateur side of the game. It was gone very corrupt, like things that were happening with Michael Connell and stuff, like people, a lot of people know what happened in that. I just, I didn't like it at all. I didn't like the way people were acting. And I was like, you know what? Time for something different. If I didn't do something different, I probably wouldn't be boxing. So I filled in my boxing forms and my medicals and stuff like that. I got accepted by Mel and then I told my parents, look, I've turned professional, I have everything sorted and uh, honestly I haven't looked back, it was the best decision I decided. Like at 19 years of age, I guess as well, obviously it, it probably made you feel more like an adult sort of in a way, yeah. you come to the end of your teenage years and stuff like that, but like when you probably look back now, you're five and one, f five and oh sorry, but one yeah. stoppage as a pro, yeah. um, when you sort of look back now, you probably nearly feel like a different lifetime ago, you know, back to 2019 <laughs> and, and everything else, like, you know, you're WBC Youth, World Weight Champion, WBF, and what's and the other? WIBA as well. WIBA as well. Yeah. So you've already three belts under your thing. Like, obviously, if anybody's not aware, obviously, Caitlin's obviously returning the ring and we're going to come back shortly. But, like, the success you've already had as an amateur mm -hmm. and a professional, you come back to the ring now nearly three years since your last fight. Do you, does it feel strange? Do, do you feel like. You're a different person, sort of now, from from even even in 2021. Oh, absolutely, massively. Like I was in a bad place mentally when my last fight in Luxembourg, which was 2021. Um, so I've I got injured. I took a bit of time away, and it's, it's KP 2.0 now. That's coming back, and I'm I'm happy. I'm healthy, and I'm excited for what's to come. Like I just feel like a different person altogether, and just my mindset is just I'm at the top of my game. I feel. And like. I know you're still just 23, obviously, with well, a female sometimes, but to watch with age, because obviously you have to make sure you're yeah. polite and everything else. But, but like, you're already five and I was a pro, you've already had a lot of success, amateur and professional. You're obviously returning to the ring, um, Stars of the Future, uh, JB Promotions card in the Red Cow Warehouse in the Red Cow Hotel on Friday the 1st of March. But six weeks away, you're, you're yeah. I'm sure you're buzzing beyond belief. I can't wait, I just can't wait to get back into the ropes and just show everyone, look, I took time away, but I'm back and make sure you know who I am because I'm going far and I know I am. So. It, and is, it, is that burning belief, obviously, say when, you, when you've had so much success and everything else, is that what's kept you going? Is that what brought you back? Like it's been easy for you three years of the ring to go, I've had a success, mm -hmm. I'm going to go and do something different, you know? Was there times, obviously, during these last three years where you thought, I'm never going to come back? Yeah, well, to be honest, myself and my boyfriend Shane, we set up our own car and business, and that's going really successful for us. And I just, it's like I just woke up one morning and said, you know what, I want to go back boxing. And just everything just clicked in place. I met Dan, and I said, look, I actually I sent him a message on Instagram. I was like, look, can I come for some pads and just see what story is? Best decision I made. And then Dan put me on to Ian, and I sent him a message. We met for a coffee, and just literally we all just clicked instantly and honest it's the best decision for myself and I know it is and just we all seem to fit and have similar personalities and stuff like that so I uh, taking the three years out was it's honestly it done me the world of good for, for everybody obviously not everybody you know people like to copy people and things like that and we're not saying obviously for boxers go and take three years out yeah. go and do something else and come back again like 
shows the commitment to you and obviously if anybody's watched the interview with, with Dan Anderson last week or obviously even with Ian the other day, like you're travelling from Kildare to Belfast three yeah. times a week. You're not staying here, you're driving up, doing your session, driving back home again. Does that is that not it in a nutshell? Obviously that shows the commitment the driver you have. It, you could easily obviously be in a gym in Dublin, you could you know, anywhere else. Like that shows the commitment, that shows the dedication for you, you're happy to do that. And let's face it, with snow and ice at the moment as well, like these drives are getting longer. Like I guess obviously everything has to click. You know, this is probably the most yeah. important spell for you now as an am as a pro, coming back obviously after everything you've been through, that you're clicking here in Belfast and everything is working very well. Yeah, no, it's I am absolutely I'm absolutely loving it here. Like it's like I said, it's the best decision for me and as soon as I came into the gym, everyone made me feel welcome, like with Owen, Connor, T J and especially Dan, like it's just like one family. As cliche as that sounds, but it's true. Like they made me feel so welcome and happy and just they're not out for themselves. It's okay, you're helping me, I help you, that kind of thing. And the weather is cold at the moment, Dan will kill me, but you can see I'm shivering. <laughs> Don't tell him I said that. <laughs> but yeah, no, it's it's cold at the moment, but it's just, I know I belong here and it's the best thing to get back into the ring and get back where I was is to find and surround myself with people that have the same goals and same mindset as me, so yeah. Obviously a lot changed in boxing, obviously firstly obviously your former promoters, obviously boxing Ireland no longer obviously operating mm -hmm. things like that. They were obviously the ones that give you a start in obviously professional mm -hmm. boxing as well. Leonard and Stephen and, and Dennis, they obviously were all boxing yeah. Ireland promotions. They'll always always hold a place in your heart for giving you that opportunity to start mm -hmm. off with. Oh, hundred percent. I'm forever grateful for the guys for getting me to where I was, like with Germany, stuff like that. If it wasn't for them, I obviously I wouldn't have got them fights. Um, it's it's quite exciting though now that the the new road that I'm on and like I said I'm always grateful for the three of them for helping me out so and obviously Ian Gorgon as well like a stable like I actually messaged Ian the other day and I was like how many fighters do you actually have I think hopefully I'm not wrong I think there's 10 on the books now obviously Ian Gorgon obviously seems to be the man that's on the move mm. I've obviously laughed and joked with him every day which I'm sure <laughs> you have as well but how is that settling in here with Ian going like Ian seems to be very easy going. He's obviously got fighters' opportunities on matchroom shows and stuff in, in mm. 2023 as well. So, was that probably a major factor as well? The fact that your your managers can be able to get the opportunities. Oh, big time! Like you have faith in him, but he also has faith in me and the other guys that he has as well. Which it's really nice to know. It's he's out to help the boxers, and obviously you're gonna have managers and promoters out there that they don't really give a shit about their fighters. Where he's the total opposite. Uh, I'm definitely his favourite. <laughs> You're his favourite already? hundred percent. The guys will kill me for saying that, but hundred <laughs> percent. He'll kill me as I, well. I know Graham McCormick will take offence, obviously he's, <laughs> he's been the, pretty much the, the first one of sort of helping him along the way, but Graham's a bit nuts. Oh, uh, I'll fight you, Graham. <laughs> <laughs> Graham fights uh, what, between super welter um, and middleweight, sort of, so um, it could sort of work out. Yeah. <laughs> he can lose a few pounds to come down to you, though. <laughs> Lim uh, Limerick versus Kildare, come on, why not? <laughs> work out very well. Um, I guess, obviously, on women's boxing as a whole, like when you started in 2019 as a pro, obviously, you come back now in 2024, the landscape of boxing's changed. There's so many, you know, even GB world champions mm. now. Obviously, Katie Taylor's lost all her belts. Well, didn't lose her belts. Yeah. She lost to, obviously, Chantelle Carmen and then got them straight back again. What have you sort of made of women's boxing sort of in the sort of time period where, I guess, from you started, 2019, to where it is now? Oh, it's massively different. Like, when I started, I think in Ireland, there could have been three pros, and now there's, obviously, there's a lot more, a lot more thinking of turning and stuff like that. And it's just, it's really nice to see that there's more opportunities for women as well. And, like, we're getting our names out there as well, and people are like, okay, yeah, I'll give them a shout, I'll give them a, like, a hand, I'll sponsor them, stuff like that. It's, there's no difference between us and the guys, like, so. And that's great, obviously, in some ways, because for years, we've obviously seen, you know, Deirdre Gordy and, mm. and obviously Katie and, and others struggle. They obviously make boundaries in the sport, and we're seeing now that women are getting respect in the sport. Yeah. Do you feel that sort of you come back now that sort of people's going to get behind you more? Everybody's going to always going to make that association to Katie Taylor. They're always going to think, are you the next Katie Taylor? Yeah. You've had your success as an amateur. You've had your success as a pro so far. But it's only right that people judge you and Kate and Phelan rather than Katie Taylor. You know, Katie Taylor will all be, always be an icon, I think, to every, not even just women, every athlete out there. Um, but 
I'm me and that's what the one big thing I said coming back is I'm going to be known as Caitlin Phelan not as or someone's little sister or the next Katie Taylor or anything like that I'm going to be known as Caitlin Phelan and they're all going to want to know who I am and my name so Speaking obviously as sponsors, obviously we were here today, obviously lucky days, yeah. uh, competitions he's just got involved with you and you're still wearing the merchandise, yeah. so they'll be loving this, but, but obviously, you know, I've seen obviously your t-shirt and stuff you have ready for press conferencing on Friday, you're obviously you're getting sponsorship and stuff behind you as well, is it, obviously it's a massive part for you, particularly when you're obviously having to drive to Belfast three times a week and stuff as well, yeah. boxing's not cheap, like yeah. sponsorship's a massive, massive part. In boxing, obviously you can be back boxing probably without your sponsorship as well. Yeah, no, it's it's without sponsors, it's not realistic to be completely honest. Um, it's costing us quite a bit traveling up and down, a little bit cheaper than if we were to stay up here for like Airbnbs or apartments or anything like that. Um, but I've I've a good backing now behind me. I'm obviously I'm always looking for some more sponsors if anyone is out there. Um, hit me up, <laughs> definitely. Have to slide in the plug it. Yeah, plug it there. <laughs> but yeah, no, be lost without sponsors. Also, if anyone likes pancakes, go to Mellow in Kildare because they do the nicest ones ever. So, if you, if you want some pancakes, pancakes would be nice. Yeah. I guess obviously, you know, you have aspirations, you have goals, you have dreams. At the start for you, is it probably just stabilizers on? Probably maybe for a couple of fights. Probably I don't know your opponent and things like that for the red cow yet, but. For you, is it probably, and, and for Dan and for Ian, with this sort of gelling together as a new team, mm. did obviously there's going to be no pressure on you at the start. Did obviously find your feet, get back in the ring, see see what it's all about, see if you still believe you sort of have it when you get in there. It's good to have it in the head, but yeah. you get in the ring and fight. Is the rest of 2024, maybe in the first six months, just about finding your feet again before you know, go and start challenging for belts? See, my problem is I if I want something, I, I don't stop till I get it and I have these big things in my head and I have a good team around me that kind of pulls me back and says, look, take your time. So our goal is just to kind of get a couple of fights under our belts, get our record back up, uh, get the name back out there, and then obviously bigger, better things to come. So it's exciting. And, and I guess, you know, with so many women boxers and stuff as well now as well, like I think everybody's now fighting to create the first piece of Irish history. There's never been um, an Irish professional <laughs> domestic well, yeah. in a way, and I'm not using this to sort of call people out, what you've already achieved as a, as a pro and everything else like that, it might be, you might say it could be below you to sort of step back, but you obviously some of the would want to create history as well, and obviously become the first Irish uh, professional champion, obviously, of, yeah. of the BUI stature. Well, obviously people will think, oh yeah, you're kind of, you're stepping backwards, going down, stuff like that. I don't think so. I want to make history, and that's what I'm here to do, and if the opportunity comes for the Irish title then I'm going to take it and it's one more belt under my name and just it's it's exciting we have a few few things coming and stuff like that so we're not spoiling the surprises no <laughs> what, what can people expect obviously Caitlin Phelan 2.0 obviously I, I've obviously watched you know I've watched your fights in Luxembourg I've obviously watched you going to Jessica Sigliaco if I can pronounce names <laughs> I can never get them yeah. we've seen you go to Germany and do someone's gym yeah. Batter them um, to the degree and obviously bring the belts back. What can we expect the Caitlin Feeling 2.0? You can definitely know it's going to be a happier, healthier, and more confident fighter than that was before. And just know that I'm coming and better watch out. Definitely. Well, look, obviously, well, thank you very much for your time. It's great to get a thank chat. You. I guess, obviously, I was putting this out in advance, and because I don't know when I'm allowed to post because of obviously the show announcements, hopefully, I can post before Friday. but. I, I just want to say on record, obviously, it's great to see you back. Thank great you. to see you smiling. The smiling <laughs> assassin name for, certainly fits the bill. <laughs> we'll let you get this cold now. Yeah. And we'll obviously, we'll catch up with you, obviously, on the 1st of March once you obviously get another win and, and move yourself to 6-0. Cool. Thank you very much. Cheers, Caitlin. Bye. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.